Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. I'm your host, Matt Gleason. We talk about the periphery and the center of the contemporary art world and visual culture. That's what people say when it's not fine art on a wall at a gallery, you know. So we're not going to be at the Getty today. We're going to be out on the streets. Later in the show, uh, artist Lisa Soto, she just got back from the Venice Biennale. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quiz her on that and many other things. But right now, I've got two guests in one, two in one. You get, you, and, and if you're not happy with our two for one today, you get your money back, money back guarantee here at Modern Art Blitz. Uh, my guests today, musician and photographer, documentarian, if you will, Jennifer Precious Finch and renowned painter, Joe O'Neill. How are you guys doing? Good, how are we you are doing? We are doing great. Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. Hi, it's nice to meet Thank you. Thank you. Welcome <laughs> to, to meet you. <laughs> Welcome to you as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a fun scene. Uh, so, so uh, Joe, uh, how did you and Jennifer meet? We met in a science class at Santa Monica College. Physical science? Physical anthropology with lab. Wow. And uh, got to be friends, and then I ended up going on tour with L7. L7 yeah. and your L7 is your band. L7 yeah. is my band. And yes. and and uh, uh, what by the who got a better grade in that class? I'm just curious. I did. You did? Yeah, probably. You, you get a, you got a B and you got an A. Probably, yeah. Or you got a C and he got a She's D. She's a better student. Yeah, You're a better student. Yeah. I'm a good student. And she's smarter. I like I like science. Student of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Absolutely. um so now uh, Joe, you were a roadie. Yes. For <laughs> an I, I was, all girl band. Yes. And. Pretty edgy band at the time, yes. would you say? Yes. Mm -hmm. Breaking Still barriers. Mm -hmm. edgy. Still, Still edgy. Still breaking barriers. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Just making sure we cover all the bases. Yeah. Somebody goes, Al Savin, ah, oh, you can't have that stuff in my house. It's the yeah. devil's music. Yeah. You know, they're still out there. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. Lisa, did you hear that? <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. So, so, um, how many years did you, were you the roadie? Uh, a couple years, 91, 92, and then I split to go to art school and then came back in 94. I was in, uh, we were on, I was on Lollapalooza with them out in the heat of the summer, putting snow, fake snow all over their stage. That was my job. I was the snow fake guy. snow. Yeah, and a yes. giant snowman. A snowman. Mm -hmm. The first reference to snow at a rock concert that was actually legitimate snow. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and how long was L7 together? Are you still, are you still, still touring? together? You still together? Still did touring. you ever, you broke, did you break up for a while and get back together? We took a break. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Everybody agreed to it. We're going to take a break. We're going to get back together in a few years. I think the story is something along those yeah, lines, so, but you know. Everybody's got a different version. <laughs> so um, while you were on the road and before you were in L7, you've had a love affair with the camera. I did. I started as a photographer in Los Angeles early on. Uh, my father was a photographer and he gave me a camera to keep me busy. I had a fascination with punk rock. Unfortunately, I was too late, because anyone who knows sort of Los Angeles punk rock history, by 80, 81, there was already a suburban sort of descent into Hollywood. Guilty as charged. Uh, that Guilty. Would be us. We ruined everything. We came in with our slam dancing and our drugs uh, and, and ruined liquor. the fun. And our malt liquor and our black beauties and ruined the fun. But in that time, I was sort of a chronic teenage runaway. I was a drug user, and I photographed my experiences as a runaway drug user. Punk rock was kind of in the background, but then I ended up having these kind of iconic shots of like Black Flag, Gun Club, Castration what? Squad. What are, what, are, what are we looking at here? Well, this is somebody shooting up in front of a by the light of the refrigerator. By the light of the refrigerator. And this is yeah. about 1980. It's 81. 81. Yeah, I was. And uh, so, uh, 15 are you, years old. Now, are you familiar with the fine art uh, photographer Nan Golden? I am. You are. I love Nan you're a fan Golden. Of, you're a fan and of Nan only Golden? recently have found out about Nan Golden because I'm not much. So you, I, so I sort you, of live in a bubble, so I don't know a lot about okay, so you, photographers. You were, you were not influenced by some some photographers. You were just a photographer inventing it on your own. Yeah, I had a lot of um, sort of negative experiences very early on with art as a young person. The type of stuff that I was photographing was very, I would say, controversial. I mean, it's not the kind of stuff that you want to show adults. So I never really got adult support in the technical aspect or the storytelling aspect because I didn't want to be grounded or put in jail. Did you, was this, now this is all kids? This is back in the day where you had to develop film, right? Absolutely. Did you do dark room? Well, luckily I could develop film. Wow. And I would put the film away. And uh, very early on I, uh, you know, went to like a summer session at Otis so that I could use the basement and develop my own stuff and print my own stuff without anybody really knowing. But there was a weird amount of shame 
with doing this because I couldn't read the adults around me like as far as their support. Um, you know, I think I'd show people my photographs and they'd kind of get uncomfortable. And I couldn't read it if they were telling, so I, I thought that I was just terrible. So I just did, uh. I just put it away, put it away, put it away until about 06 when a friend from the LA Weekly started to say, hey, do you have any photographs of me? Which is always how people start. You know, that's <laughs> and, um, it's, it's a very popular subject. It's a very popular me. subject. Yes, and, my favorite subject. Um, yeah. <laughs> he, he pulled out like five different proof sheets and they did an entire like sort of LA Weekly spread off of five sheets. Wow. And then since then, I found in my garage, put away, hidden, some of it hidden, um, six to 9,000 negatives and Polaroids. Wow. And I'd just been kind of pulling it out. so. I had the 80s experience in Los Angeles, but then in L7, I had all this access to just photographing kind of what was going on. I'd gotten clean in 90, so I stopped doing drugs and had nothing really left to do on Lollapalooza, on Warp Tour, on these extensive tours with Nirvana, the Beastie Boys, the Breeders, Smashing Pumpkins. Um, Courtney Love has always been a subject. I knew her when we were very young. I have photographs of her when we were 15 all the way through to the 90s. She's quite one of the muses. I have a bunch of women. I've always enjoyed photographing women and female experience and kind of this masculinized like punk rock environment and how we kind of move our way through our own expressions and these environments and in Los Angeles. And so I have an abundance of all this stuff and literally had a breakdown like this. I just started crying. Like I couldn't, I didn't know what to do. It's just overwhelming I, when you yeah, look I at- I don't know what to do. I and it's, it's a wealth of, of stuff and there's a lot of people cashing in on punk rock nostalgia. Which I just think is an old whore of a topic. I get it. People want nostalgia. They want photographs, literally capture memory and help create memory for people and cre help create their narrative. I'm down for that, but it's been, it's taken me a while just to figure out like who I am in this. Cause I know who I am as a musician. I and you, you don't played, know who I am as a visual you artist. You played bass for L7, I right? played bass for L7. Did you ever play guitar at all? Yeah, I actually started as a guitarist. Oh, okay. when I, I left L7 in 96 and I was guitarist, singer of a band called Other Star People and then of a band called The Shocker. So I kind of have a musical career. L7 is my favorite, of course, but I have a, a, a career outside of that. I guess they're all my favorite. Did you, did you know um, in whole Jill Emery, I the did. original? Yeah, you know, she had a solo show at my gallery. Did you know that? No. Yeah, about, about, uh, about have, a year ago, yeah. I have, sitting on my kitchen table, the first band photograph of Hole? Of, of Hole. Wow. With Jill and Mike Giesbrecht and Eric wow, wow, and wow. Courtney. I mean, so now, I have all this stuff. Did you see uh, Courtney when she performed at Jumbo's Clown Room back in the day? I saw her at Paris House. Wow. Paris House. Her and I both worked at Paris House That's, together. You're Santa going Monica. way back. I think that she actually never really worked at Jumbo's Clown Room. Wow. I think she always worked at Paris House, which is a little bit a step. It was like Paris a, was about a step and a half down. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's pretty hard to get much lower than yeah. the old Jumbos, right? Yeah. No, I, I like Jumbos. So anyway, one of the things that's on the screen right now that I see is like an example of, um, you know, two women that I had taken photographs of. This was like an example of the kind of stuff that was a bit risque for a 15 year old to be photographing. And on, I think on the viewer's right is um, Ron Athey and Roz Williams in a Christian death performance. Okay. Um, so I pulled some of those images of Ron. He just did a book. Do you know, are you familiar? Oh, I, I, I helped yeah. in the, that's the, my first and only Kickstarter uh, to date that I've, that I've donated to. <clears throat> yes, He's yes, I was, I was thrilled. He's a He's great guy. He's an amazing great artist. Guy. His mm -hmm. book is great if you ever get a chance. Uh, I don't even think this image was used in his book, but I pulled some wow. that I was just there. And I was there because I like drugs and boys and were, goofing off and, and now I have these photos. Were you aware of Larry Clark at the time? I was not aware of Larry Clark until later in my life. But I often say, what if Larry Clark was a 14-year-old girl? Well, it was actually yeah. like, in well, the, mm -hmm. you know. And, and Larry Clark thinks that every day. Oh, if only I was a 14-year-old <laughs> girl. girl. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> um, so you're 14, you're living in Hollywood at the time? I ran away from home originally at 13. Oh dear. And on sunset, lost my virginity to a hustler boyfriend, uh -oh. heroin addict, Ooh. and I have a lot of photographs of him. Ooh wee. Oh, well, What yeah. are we looking at here? This is, um, well, this is a 90s photograph of Susie Gardner from L7. I, I have some of the 
the, you know, the best seat for the live photographs. So oh, so you're on stage. You just, I'm on stage you just, shooting. Yeah, you know, the audience. Reach over on the, you keep the camera on the amp? Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. That yeah. It? I traveled yeah. with a film camera all through the 90s. And have you ever done a and film, a movie film? And I a mean, video camera as video, well. Video too, yes. I have a lot of, yeah, video. Yeah. And there's, a, you know, an L7 documentary that's in production. Really? Now, and some of my stuff is in it, yeah. Are there incriminating shots of Joe in this documentary? I have. Oh, no, really? <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> So what goes on the we, road stays on the we road, like to say Joe's or maybe a goer. not. He's a goer. He likes to go. <laughs> so Joe, Joe, tell me, uh, you're an artist, fine art artist, yes. and you've been in this rock and roll, this decadent rock and roll lifestyle. Yes. Are there parallels between being an art star and a rock star? Um, well, I suppose there is. I wasn't actually a rock star because I was more behind the scenes. But yeah, it he seems like there's. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that there is, and I'm hoping to get more of the the art star debauchery, you know. <laughs> we need a more, parallels. here's to a more decadent art world. What can we do yeah. as art world denizens to make it a more decadent yes. rock star-like atmosphere for you art stars, Joe? Yes, I don't know. You don't know? I'm still but trying get to, to figure work. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get to work, people. <clears throat> Joe needs minions. Yeah. So, so now, now um, you were, uh, this looks like, where, do you know where this was when you were on tour? Sure, it was in Japan. That's in Japan? In Osaka, yeah. So you've, you've toured the world. The world. Okay, I met. But not Alaska. I met the drummer from Rush, and he, he told me, name a city with a soccer stadium, I've been there. Is it wow. is, uh, L7? I mean, you've, you've been around, you've, you've been to, what, what's the biggest name venue? Name a club with two broken-ass toilets <laughs> and, some, and a fryer, and I've been there. Yeah. So, so what's the biggest venue you ever played? Um, there was a venue in Brazil. There was, uh, do you know the name of the venue? Mm -mm, I wasn't on that one, but yeah. 450,000 people. Yeah. You played to Ha almost half a million. They say that there were three deaths and three births in the venue at the time <laughs> we were playing. Wow, that's actually statistically it's, to any group. You can group look it up of, on YouTube. Any group L7 of, Brazil, it's wow. all out there. Yeah. And so, what's the smallest crowd you ever played to? Uh, right now. <laughs> yeah. <Just kidding. laughs> Nolan, Elisa, and Jack. Okay, yeah. well there you go. Now, hey, so so some of the did you, the clubs in LA? Do you, the, you know, there's we, we all have great memories of some of these clubs. Um, do you ever play Al's Bar? Of course. Played Al's Bar. Did you yes. play? You play Godzilla's? Yes, but not with L7. That was that way was before L7's eyes. What L7. was your band that you played with? I was with? in a band called Uh. Uh? Uh. Great. Oh, man. Well, one of the great band names yes. I've ever heard. That was awesome. And it won Band Name of the Year. It did. LA Weekly mm -hmm. and Ethan Port from Savage Republic was in Oh, uh. Savage Republic? Mm -hmm. Bruce Leischer. I'm going to do a little promo now. Bruce Leischer mm -hmm. from Savage Republic will be here next week. With oh, Stuart nice. Sweezy, you talk about the desert test site. Uh, that's right. His, the film that's coming out, the documentary. Did you ever go out to the desert? I never went out to the desert because I worked for Bruce at the time at Independent Project wow. Press, and he had me mind the store while they all went out and did all that. Oh my God! So you took care of. At so we got we got Starkman the mind building next week. We got the. Jeez, uh, okay, yeah. man, it's getting getting a little incestuous here on modern art. It but always does. Yeah, yeah. as it should. Yeah. So this is why I want to be an artist for this sex. So. So tell me now, do you aspire with these photos? To, let me tell you, if, you're in, if you want to be celibate, get into the art world for the sex. How's that? <laughs> I'm going to change that. Yeah. Woo! Okay. You, do you aspire to have a gallery show, a museum show, a book and of your art? Are you on the, the punk rock gravy train here? Tell me about it. I literally aspire to none of that. None of that? I aspire to a new model. A none what? of it has felt good to me, and oh. that's why I've never really brought these out to show this stuff, because everyone's like, book this and show that, but I'm not feeling it. No? No. What do you aspire to? What's the new model? Well, what I want to do right now is just preserve these photos. I have a Kickstarter going right now, which I actually funded this morning. Yay! All right. Well, we'll be, but we could still pip it and make more money. What is the Kickstarter? What is it? What, what is the name? Like, if I'm looking for it on Kickstarter, what do I say? It's, well, you can look under Jennifer Finch, Gone in a Flash. Jennifer Finch, Gone in a right. Flash. Because what was happening is I'm sitting around trying to evaluate my own narrative and, like, figure out what I want to do. And Woo. meanwhile, all of my Polaroids are just fading. Oh, no. And you know, no, one, no one wants to see faded Polaroids of Pearl Jam. So I was just trying to get them all together. There's got to be one or two fans out there. You know? there's, yeah, yeah, there's, there's got to be some kid on there. eBay saying, all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 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 you aspire to like get everything saved in, in on on disc. I'm going to tell you what my dream is. Okay. I don't know if I will get to. You're my allowed dream. to dream. My guests I'm allowed are to allowed. Dream. To modern art. Let's, I want this to be a space where my guests can dream. Um, dream. At, you know, after I left punk rock, and after I left L7, I got into kind of open source community like uh, programming. I had originally gone to uh, San Francisco State for computer programming, and I got into open source software. So I'm an open sourced kind of person. Okay. So I would really love to be able to digitize all of these pieces 
and just get them out to the community so that other people can use them for their own stories. Wow. I really... You're, you're basically but, yeah. giving it away. Yeah. So if people come to me and they say, hey, do you have a... It's really hard for me to go through this kind of stuff. It's so because be, of the personal right. or because there's just so much? There's so much of it and it's not organized and it's not digitized. Okay. So when people like require it to move their own story forward, I can't bridge it. Like you gave Ron Athey the photo from, right. from Christian Death. Okay. Right, so somebody right, calls right. you, hey, do you have a photo of Darby? Right. Do you uh, say somewhere? I will somewhere? say, look, I am not 55. Ah. Yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just but, kidding. Will they be able, so people will be able to source, uh, search the database Hopefully. themselves that and pull hope. photos out? But I don't know the legality. I don't know. You know, everything's being put on Amazon servers right now as I, I scan them, but I don't know how it, practical that is. Is this what the Kickstarter is raising money for? The Kickstarter is raising money to, pres to digitize, archive, and preserve the images so that I have a budget because I need help. I need, I need to hire somebody. You need to hire somebody to just do some of the it's grunt a, work. It's yes, a massive, exactly. it's a it's massive pile massive. of stuff. And, and I, I mean, she was always shooting photos, but even though we've been good friends for many years, I had no idea the magnitude of her, of her archive and how much stuff was actually there. Wow. Well, people yeah. obviously see the importance so, in it because you made your Kickstarter goal. Yeah. That's, Isn't that crazy? It's like, cause some Kickstarters never make their goal. So they don't. So what are we looking at here? So you, um, one of the things that I, this is my father. Oh, wow. Um, my uh, father was from Britain. He came to Cal Southern California to work in the aero industry. Very typical sort of story of that era of, the, oh, yeah. you know, civil rights era, 60s coming out here. Um, I wanted to show this photo because I just love that this is, you know, DTLA by... The 4th Street Bridge? Yeah. This is, this is the arts district now. Yeah. And what year is this? I'm going to say 80. Wow, those things were gone by uh, 85, you know, yeah. those oil mm -hmm. derricks. Uh, but, yeah. you know, all of L.A. is on an oil field. Yeah. You know, up, up until 1950, uh, California had more oil revenue than Texas. But then they decided to, to sell houses here and they mm -hmm. plugged mm -hmm. all the oil wells. But, yeah. you know, Texas uh, Yeah, the beaches really, had mm -hmm. derricks up and down them. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. So. yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but I think this is where Gratitude Cafe is now. It, it, this right? is, this is, it's, it's right yeah, by Cafe Gratitude. Exactly, yeah. But this is the kind of help I need because I'm just seeing... You see hundreds stuff, but it, and it, hundreds it, and hundreds of these. Wow. Photos. And you and, and again, you have no interest. So you're doing a Kickstarter to raise money, but you have no interest at all in like monetizing this. No. My interest. I love storytelling, and I love people's stories. I love my own story. And it's, you're, and you're, I'd like to do something to move my own story forward. But I don't think this is where I'm gonna. No, no, no. Are you producing? I'm uh, planning on marrying someone really rich. Well, no, you know, <laughs> gentlemen. The L.A. The L.A. Joe, dream. The average income the of my viewership is in the <laughs> no. triple digits. They're, they make a hundred to nine hundred a year. So. There you I go. Know, right? Ooh, thousand hey, errors, you're saying. Th there are almost thousand yeah. errors out there. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so, do you are you making the documentary on L seven? No, there's a producer there's, director. So, so, but, but it, yeah, any of your handed, footage in it? Oh, you just you just said here, take it. No, they didn't take a lot of my photos. Really? I think that they didn't. There wasn't. Again, it was like I didn't have anything digitized. It's like very uh, disappointing when I was trying to go through stuff. I couldn't find things. Now, in the scheme of of in the narrative of the grand punk rock story is L7 the first all girl LA punk band where oh, there were others too there of was course. Castration mm -hmm. Squad oh, there was Go 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 Go's were a punk band yeah. you remember when the Go Go's were a punk band yeah. do you remember of course mm -hmm. they still are to me yeah okay i'm going to do a trivia question you ready mm -hmm. ready Here okay comes. belinda carlisle what was her punk rock name before when she was the drummer for the germs i'm not 55 ah! <laughs> <laughs> What I've heard it? it, but I don't remember. I know it. it's in the Alice Bag book. Yeah. Donna Rhea. Ah, <laughs> that's a good one. Of my, one. one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, that's a good so, one. Who are we looking at here? So that's Offspring. I was just trying to show some stuff that I have from the late '90s. So you've got this decadent phase from your, I want to say childhood, but your teenage years, mm -hmm. your childhood, mm -hmm. and so uh, then you're a rock star. You've got the your your your. Um, compatriots, your colleagues, sure. yeah. your peers. And uh, so, so, and of course, the question that every person between the ages of 15 and 50 has to ask you then, of course, is what was Kurt Cobain like? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, very sweet, very mild Mandarin. Yeah. Very creative. Very creative. A force. Yeah. Uh, than the 27. You, you, you survived the 27, though. That's like the curse year for rock stars, it could right? Be. 
So, but you, you survived it. I did. So I see you did as well. Well, you know. Well, you might not be there yet. <laughs> oh, 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 flattery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. What are we looking at here? Uh, you know, I just grabbed some images of. Oh, cool. You know, misspent youth kind of stuff. It, this is like random selection yeah, I mean, of what honestly, we're looking at. Honestly, I have to say that um, what I, I continuously try to do is distance myself from the, like, how many Courtney Love photos do you have? How many Nirvana photos do you have? Because I feel like my, you know, my, well, how many Courtney Love photos do you have? There's one there. There's one right here. There she is. <laughs> uh, uh, what so year is, is That's what a year good is one. This? I'm going to say 85. 1985. 86. 86. Yeah. And this was just a light study. Like, I was just really looking at portraiture lighting and trying to figure it out. Wow. You know, by reading books and setting tests up. Wow, wow, wow. You know, so my friends just got stuck being models. Put them to work, I say. Yeah, and I only had hot lights. Like, I just had, and I still only shoot with big keg full lighting. I don't even know how to use a modern light kit. Wow. Mm. What about point and shoot? Do you ever just... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, I I continue to be um, a photographer today. Like, I have bodies of work that I'm working on outside of this stuff. Wow. I have a, a series that I'm doing called The Summer to Come, which is where I take an underwater camera and I go to very public locations at a time when there's nobody there, kind of at the point of sundown, and I'm shooting with this underwater camera. So I've been to France, I've been to Germany, and a couple other places, and I'm gonna show that. I'm doing it as like maybe a seven year series. Wow, and so, now do you aspire that to be shown in a fine art context? That I'd love to yeah. show. As opposed yeah, to- Yeah, but no, then everyone says, well, how about the Nirvana? Yeah, book? everybody, yeah, so, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, but which is fine, like I get it, but it, I'm not gonna do a book. Like that's why people call and, you know, people have offered to sit down with me and do books, and then they're like, well, how many more photos do you have of the Beastie Boys? And I'm just like, a lot. A lot, I but guess. not for the project. Yeah, I'm just not interested in exploiting my friends and wow, the, wow. my subjects that, in that manner. Man, and who, oh, is this a Lux? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so this is uh, one of the first photos I took at a live show. It's probably the third photo I took. It's from 1980. Is that the whiskey? At the whiskey, yeah. Oh, hey, all right. Good job. Jeez. Nice. Nobody really knows this view because it's the uh, balcony off to stage right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wow. I Somehow I think I was at that show, though. That's the weirdest thing. Great. That's it was like, the first show Kid played. Oh, God. So Kid says it's 81. Yeah? Wow. Early, wow. I think. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. But that's the kind of help I need. And ooh, what's this? Well, a lot of people are doing kind of big on the skate stuff, and I took skate photos when that, I was younger also. Is that Reseda Skater Cross? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. How did you know that? Because I skated Reseda Skater Cross when it was closed, when it looked like that with all like that graffiti. Before it became so official? That's the way. Yeah, well, no, when it was after, like, in the big, there was a big boom of skate parks in, like, the late 70s, early 80s, and then they all closed. And so we'd go to them after, like one climb the kid fence. Bumped his head at yeah, one kid. Wave and and now they've worked out the the uh, the legality, so yes. there's skate parks everywhere, and they look amazing. And I'm yeah, don't want to. Kids any today, bones. they don't know how good they have it. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Joe O'Neill, I broke. See, I broke my foot. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> we we do have to talk about. Can we get a wide shot here? Yeah. <laughs> Will you? And she didn't even doesn't even skateboard. Tell you, this is not a skateboarding accident. No. What happened? Uh, I was walking uh, on a sidewalk and went side, wasn't paying attention and went sideways. But this is the kind of, this is, this is how much I resist doing art. Your Kickstarter makes, makes the grade, but then you break yeah, a leg. Exactly. Yeah. So this photo here, this is one, maybe um, second or third show that Jell-O? I've gone to. It's very good. It's Jello. And then on the same day, since what a lot of the stuff of my, I call it the body of work is 14 and shooting, which is the early, get it, 14 and shooting. 14 and shooting. Yeah. Yeah. But this okay. is like, I would be shooting this in the daytime and then we'd go to a oh, show okay. at night and I'd, you know. So who's this with the gladiolas? That's a friend of mine, Yasmin. Ah, is Yasmin still with us? She is, um, most of my subjects are still with us oh, despite our misspent. Life. I was just gonna say, man, statistically, it, mm-hmm. you know, it should yeah. be 50-50, I yeah. think sometimes. Yeah. And some of this early stuff too, uh, at resistance is everyone has kids and everyone kind of has a thing and I wanted to wait till all their kids were a little bit oh, older. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, exposure. yeah, mom, yeah mm-hmm. mom and dad, oh boy, yeah, you yeah. don't want to say. Yeah, you know, mommy wanna... kissed another woman, Yeah, 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 yeah. We You're don't want still that. trying not to offend the parents. Yeah. It's just that now the parents are the subjects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So, well, hey, Joe O'Neill, Jennifer That's Precious sweet. Finch, thank you. Oh, Joe, real quick. Yes. Do you have anything coming up? Any shows? Uh, I'm going to show it Beyond Broke in February. At the Mike Kelly Gallery. At the Mike Kelly Gallery. February 2018. 
Yes, February 2018. Wow, so wow, I'm wow. working on that. And things may come up. I just was. Uh, I just randomly had some paintings in a show at a college in Texas that <laughs> just came back. So you know, the one college in yeah. Texas has been enlightened by the yes. work of so, Joe. Uh, well, so, yeah. Joe, Jennifer, thanks for being on Modern Art Blitz. Thank, Thank you. you. Always a, a great to see you. Great to talk to you. We'll be back right after this.